thank you very much for uh, an invitation to speak at this uh, exciting uh, workshop. Um, so today I'm going to talk about uh, reasoning in knowledge graphs uh, with uh, beta embeddings. So the talk today will be about knowledge graphs. And knowledge graph is simply a heterogeneous graphs where we have different multiple types of entities and relations. And we can think of uh, links uh, relating uh, the entities as, um, as triples that represent uh, facts that are known in the, in the world. So for example, Paris is a city where uh, a triple has a head and a relation and tail. So in this example, Paris and city are two entities and is a is a, a relation or Paris has population 2.1 million. Here Paris and 2.1 million would be entities and uh, population of would be a, a relation. Um, and we can encode in this kind of graphical structure knowledge from many different domains. For example, we can encode uh, common sense knowledge. Here I'm showing a small example of uh, a knowledge graph called uh, ConceptNet that kind of tell, talks about uh, different uh, uh, applications of hair and hairbrush and, and types and what is it related to and so on. So that's one example of a knowledge graph. Um, there are many other examples of knowledge graph. We can knowledge graphs. We can think of entire Wikipedia, or we can think of uh, entire Facebook or LinkedIn as one giant heterogeneous knowledge graph relating different uh, entities uh, with different types of uh, relations. Uh, similarly, we can think of biology, biology as a giant knowledge graph that relates different biological entities. For example, in this case, I'm kind of showing you a schema of a knowledge graph of uh, proteins being related to diseases, drugs, drugs having side effects, and proteins participating in different biological proper, uh, processes, where we have different num numbers of entities of each of this type, as well as many different types of relations uh, connecting them. And last, I want we can even think of online communities, for example, uh, Reddit in this case, um, as a heterogeneous graph relating users, their votes to posts, posts belonging to communities, and posts also containing words. So essentially, the, the, my point being is that we can take uh, heterogeneous data and represent it um, as, a, uh, as a knowledge graph. And uh, the benefits of knowledge graphs are that they explicitly, explicitly store knowledge, they are interpretable, we can look at them, and they are also in some sense easy to update and improve over time as we can add additional entities and uh, additional relations. Um, however, when we look at the applications of knowledge graphs today uh, in personal assistance or search engines and so on, um, is basically it's all about retrieving a given entity and the relationships the entity uh, has. So, for example, the uh, Google knowledge graph uh, or another example would be the Siri uh, knowledge graph that the Siri is using is basically um, when we ask about a given person, it would identify or a given entity, a given object, it would identify it in the knowledge graph and then display in a structured form the information um, the knowledge graph contains uh, about that entity. For example, here, uh, uh, Thomas, Thomas Jefferson. Um, or, for example, if I if we are asking a question to Google, as I'm showing here, then again, basically, what uh, the way you answer this question is to um, uh, first parse it and understand that there's Leonardo da Vinci uh, is the entity and the relation relation is born. So you locate the entity, locate uh, and then find the relation born of that entity, and you display the uh, information. So this is, for example, some of the applications of knowledge graphs uh, today. However, what we would like to do with knowledge graphs is much, much more, right? It's not just about locating an entity and displaying all the relationships of it or identifying an entity, a relation, and uh, displaying the tail of that uh, entity, like where was Leonardo da Vinci born, but really do much more complex logical reasoning and question answering uh, on top of uh, knowledge graphs. Imagine we want to ask questions like, where did Canadian Turing Award winners graduate? Right, so we need to identify Canadians, Turing Award winners, uh, 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 understand who, who has proper, both these properties and then figure out where these people graduate. Or for example, we could ask who are uh, current presidents of European countries which never held a football uh, World Cup. Again, here we need to identify presidents of European countries, we need to identify countries 
that uh, held the held the World Cup, then take the negation of that to identify all the com countries that did not hold held, hold the World Cup, and then uh, figure out which which countries uh, are in Europe didn't hold the World Cup and who's their president. Or, for example, another case, very realistic, is you know, can I predict drugs that might target proteins that are associated with SARS-CoV-2? Right, that's a a complex uh, uh, prediction problem, but it's essentially about uh, identifying the proteins, predicting links between drugs and proteins, and then uh, identifying which one of them are associated with SARS-CoV-2. And that's a prediction problem, even though you can think of it as a, as a query on a, on a knowledge graph, where in this case, the knowledge graph would be very uh, incomplete. So a traditional approach, how you would answer these types of queries would be to, to take the query in the natural language or the question in the natural language, translate it into some structured query. Maybe you translate it into SQL, maybe you translate it into Sparkle. So a um, um, uh, kind of a ontology based uh, um, uh, language for uh, uh, querying uh, ontologies. Um, and then execute this query on this uh, knowledge graph where basically you would match the ground identities and then kind of traverse the knowledge graph according to the relations and the uh, logical relations that the query uh, contains. Um, but the, you know, to give you some examples of how this would look like, imagine I have a knowledge graph of biomedicine, the one I ex, uh, uh, explained earlier. You may want to uh, ask, you know, what are the drugs C that might target proteins that are associated with given diseases D1 and D2? And the way you can think of this is to say, aha, I want to have diseases D1 and D2. I want, I want to traverse over a relationship associated to, to go to a protein. And then from a protein, I want to go to a, to a drug compound that targets uh, that uh, protein. And uh, sorry, uh, that is targeted by that uh, drug. And if I have this kind of query, let's say template or graph, then if I have a complete knowledge graph, then I can simply take this and try to uh, fit it on the underlying knowledge graph. And here, for example, um, uh, uh, C3 would be the answer because I can go from D1 to D and D2 across the associated relation to P2 and then across a target relation. But nowhere else, for example, C1 or C2, I cannot um, uh, feed this query uh, graph to, uh, uh, to this part of the knowledge graph. So really only entity uh, C3 is the answer to this query. Um, another example would be, for example, I could say predict community C in which a user uh, is likely to upload a post. The predictive query here would be that we start with a user uh, 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 go over an upload relation to a, com uh, to a post and that post belongs to a community. So if I have a small part of the knowledge graph, here's the user, upload and belong. So C3 is the answer. Similarly, upload and belong C2 is the answer to this query. While for example, um, uh, from U uh, to P1 and C1 is not the answer to the query because the relationship uh, types, the relation types are wrong, are downvote and belong, not upvote and belong. Um, and this is just an example of how can we think about answering queries uh, over knowledge graphs. And of course, if we have a complete uh, knowledge graph, if everything is known, then we can traverse the knowledge graph. However, in both of these examples that I showed, the knowledge graphs are notoriously incomplete, right? In biology, in medicine, there is a lot of knowledge we simply don't have. In, uh, in online communities, there's a lot of activity that simply hasn't yet happened or a lot of preferences that are not uh, revealed yet and have to be predicted. So the key challenge in answering these queries is that we have large graphs, we have large queries that can involve uh, noisy and unobserved relations, right? Um, uh, knowledge that we simply don't have yet or that is not yet encoded in the knowledge graph. Right, so basically some links, some relations might be uh, noisy and missing. And if uh, links are missing, then you cannot traverse them and you may not be able to find any answers because of the missingness of the knowledge graph. And of course, one thing you could do is to say, let's apply um, link prediction to create, uh, to fill in the missing knowledge in the knowledge graph. And then let's try to apply the, gra uh, the graph template matching. But the problem becomes if the knowledge graphs are, are very large, then this template matching becomes very expensive. It is actually exponentially expensive in the size of the query. So we cannot answer very complex uh, large queries uh, efficiently. 
another reason why this is uh, why this is hard, why answering such queries is hard beyond just uh, missingness, is also heterogeneity of these knowledge graphs that we have a lot of different entity types and relation types. Uh, noise and incompleteness is another one, as I discussed. Also, uncertainty around relationships, um, their massive size, and uh, we want a uh, fast uh, query time. So with this motivation, I want to now dive in into our work. Um, the goal of our work is to reason over the incomplete knowledge graphs using complex multi-hop queries. And in particular, I will present a method based on beta embeddings that allows us to answer logical queries in the first order logic. So it means we are, we'll be able to support an existential quantifier, a conjunction, an end operator, a disjunction, an or, and a negation, uh, a not, right? Um, and uh, this means that basically what we will um, what we will assume is that we are given a, a query, a question, for example, where did all Canadian citizens with Turing Award graduate? Um, and uh, we want to be able to answer it. And uh, uh, just to be to be clear, I will not discuss about how do you get from question to the underlying uh, query uh, template. So this kind of structured form of the query, we actually have a paper at this year's uh, ICML um, called um, Lego that actually does this step of how do you go from question, uh, from natural language question to the query, uh, query template or for, to the query execution plan. So um, another way we can think of our um, query answering over knowledge graph is we can think of it as a form of complex link prediction, where basically given an arbitrary query, we want to predict complex hypergraph links. We want to basically predict the link between the ground identities, which would be Canada and Turing Award in, in our case, and the universities from which these um, uh, Turing Award winners uh, have graduated, right? So in some sense, it's a, a hypergraph link between ground identities and some other set of entities. That's another way how you can think of this, because in our work, we assume the underlying uh, um, knowledge graph is incomplete, and simply traversing the knowledge graph is not possible. So we have to impute the relations as we are answering the query uh, on the fly. So uh, to introduce uh, two more concepts, um, I, I said so far that we, are, we will assume we are given a question. Um, this question will be in the form of what we call query graph, which will have the grounded entities and then types of relations um, uh, that we need to uh, traverse. We will be given a knowledge graph. And then, as I said, one way to answer a given query would be to identify the ground identities and then traverse the relationships win and citizen, identify the entities to which we can go to Turing Award and Canada according to citizen and win relation, and then also traverse from them over the graduate link to identify the target entity. And uh, if, if such a template uh, can be mapped to the knowledge graph, to the target entity uh, denoted by a question mark, then that entity is the answer uh, to the query, right? So we can think of what we call a computation graph or query execution graph that tells us how to execute the query, right? It says, start with the grounded entity, up, uh, traverse, this is called a, pro a project over the win operator, um, and then, uh, and then uh, uh, take Canada and project over the citizen uh, operator, then take the intersection of these two sets. Now you have the intersection, the set of entities in the intersection, and then project again according to the graduated from uh, relation. So that's uh, you know, what we call a computation graph, a query execution graph. So our main idea to answer these types of queries will be to do this in the embedding space. So basically what we will want to do is we will want to take the knowledge graph and embed it uh, into the underlying embedding space. And then we are going to take the logical query um, and we are going to decompose it into a set of operators, but these operators are going to operate directly on the embedding space. So basically the idea will be that we want to learn the structure of the embedding space in such a way that we can move around the embedding space and perform logical operations while moving around. Um, and we have pioneered this approach in our uh, graph query embeddings um, uh, work a few years uh, back, where we embedded a query into a single point in the Euclidean space, and answers were simply the entities that were close 
to the close in the space to the uh, embedding of the of the of the query and this was a good first approach which we then later uh, expanded with what we call query to box where we embed a query as a box as a hyper rectangle in the euclidean space and answers to the query are nodes that are inside the box um, right so the idea is if i'm given the query execution graph then I can simply execute this in, in the embedding space by taking a starting entity um, and then apply an operator that returns a box. And I can take another entity and apply an operator that gives me a box. But then it's easy to define an intersection of two boxes, which is again a box. And then I can again apply some spatial operator that corresponds to this uh, projection to, to come up with another box. And this is great because the intersection of boxes is uh, is closed, is a box. So now we are basically able to answer queries that include an end uh, operator. The problem with this approach is that it's unclear how to answer queries that, that contain an OR operator, and it's unclear um, uh, how to answer queries that uh, contain a negation operator because a negation of the box is not a box, is everything but the box. And it's unclear how to represent this and how to reason about it. So what we would like to do in this work is we would like to talk about, uh, uh, present an approach that allows us to handle a negation. We'd like to be able to answer queries like, you know, who are the presidents of European countries that never held a World Cup? And never means that we have a negation here, right? We say World Cup, all the countries that held the World Cup, but now we want to take the ones that never held the World Cup, so didn't take the World Cup. So that's the idea. And the way we are going to do this um, is um, um, to define a new version of um, uh, 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 embedding. Right, and our embedding will be that uh, in such a way we are going to design it so that these uh, logical operators over this in this embedding space will be closed, meaning that we can take two objects, perform a logical operator on them, and we get an object of the same type. So this means that operations can be arbitrarily combined, and the representation has a fixed size, a fixed a fixed structure, regardless of the query complexity and regardless of the operations we have uh, performed. Uh, so far. Um, it will also allow us to capture uncertainty around the answers to the query, and it will allow us to embed queries um, and entities in the same uh, space. So this will be um, uh, very... So our approach is called uh, beta E, and our idea is to embed entities and queries as distributions, in particular as beta distributions in the embedding space. And then we are going to design probabilistic logical operators that operate over these beta distributions in the embedding space. So our idea will be that our logical operators um, are going to be closed, which means that whenever we take um, as, uh, uh, two distributions, apply a um, logical operator to them, for example, negation, we get the same type of object as it was uh, on the input. This means that, um, if we are able to capture uh, a negation and an end operator, uh, then we can basically naturally represent an OR operator as a combination of end uh, and uh, negation operator using the De Morgan laws. Uh, to handle uncertainty in the query answers, we are going to use the entropy of the beta distribution and see whether it is um, proportional to the number of answers a query gives, because the more answers a query gives, the less certain we are into each one of them. And then we are going to embed any first order logical query and find answers by measuring the distance between the query embedding and the entity embeddings uh, in the same embedding space. And because everything in our case will be embedded as distributions, meaning entities will be embedded as distributions, we are going to use KL divergence as a measure of distance. So let me explain how we, are, uh, how we do things. Uh, in our beta E embeddings, we embed queries with beta distribution. So it means every query, every entity will be embedded as a um, multivariate uh, uh, or a combination of univariate uh, beta distributions, right? So if we embed in, D di in n dimensions, then we'll have this type of uh, n-dimensional uh, beta distributions, which is, um, and uh, in this case, each beta distribution will have two parameters, alpha and beta. 
and beta distribution is defined on an interval 0, 1. And what is nice about beta is that it has a flexible shape. For example, here are some examples of the uh, of the density of the beta distribution on, on this interval 0, 1. Uh, right? So it can have a unimodal shape. It can have this kind of bimodal shapes. Uh, it can have it can, it can take very flexible shape. Now that we have defined how we are going to embed uh, and represent entities, um, now we need to decide how do we um, define our operators. And we, are, we need to define three logical operators. We need to define the intersection operator. Uh, we need to define the negation operator. And we also need to define what we call a projection operator that corresponds to traversing a single uh, uh, relation type. Uh, in the knowledge graph. This is what we call a projection uh, operator. Um, in terms of, now I'm going to explain each one of them. So for a projection operator, basically we want an operator that takes in a beta, um, a input beta distribution, a relation type, and outputs a beta distribution. And the relation, basically this corresponds to rela relation traversal from one fuzzy set of entities to another kind of fuzzy set of entities right so we can think we have a beta distribution that is that that has high density over some set of entities and now we want to traverse in the knowledge graph from that set of entities to some other set of entities so we will want to take this beta distribution and transform it into something else so that whatever entities are at the end of of the uh, of the given relation uh, they are uh, they get now uh, a high density Right, so this is a probabilistic projection operator. Then we want to define a probabilistic intersection operator that will take a bunch of beta distributions and take an intersection over them, right? Or in some sense, we take a set of fuzzy sets and we take an intersection over them. And what we are going to do is we are going to take the product of these distributions uh, to model the end operator. Right, and what is nice about product is that um, um, uh, 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 the product of two beta distributions is still a beta distribution. Another nice property of the product is that the value uh, of the product will, will take high, val high value in the places where both beta distributions have high value, where both have uh, high density. So it's exactly what an end uh, operator is. Um, the product of beta distributions um, has other uh, nice uh, properties. First, it's commutative. You know, the, the so we um, uh, so it's kind of order invariant if you want to think of it that way. It's self consistent, right? A uh, intersection of the set with itself, it's still the same set. So um, intersection. Uh, so that is nice, and it also has what we call zero force, right? If if at a given given uh, given location in the space, one distribution takes a high value and the other one takes high value, then the product will be high. For everything else, the product will take low value, right? So kind of the point is, it really corresponds to the uh, end uh, operator. Uh, for the negation operator, we want to basically take one beta distribution and we want to negate it. And uh, the way we do this is we basically directly take the reciprocal of the parameters, right? So if you have alpha uh, beta distribution with parameters alpha beta, we can take uh, one over alpha and one over beta. And you know why do we do this? Is because it transforms the density. It kind of flips it around, right? So if I have a density like this and I want to take a uh, negation of it, then whenever this dens this distribution has high density, I want the negation to have low, and wherever it has low, I want it to be high. And exactly taking taking the inverse of the model parameters uh, takes this. Uh, another nice uh, property of, uh, of, of this approach is that a negation of a negation um, um, uh, gives me the same distribution back, right? So if I take a beta distribution, take one over the parameter, take one over the parameter again, I get the same uh, beta distribution as I started with, uh, which, is, uh, which is awesome. So um, now that we defined the basic framework, let me now give you an example of how this works um, uh, and how 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 do we make it uh, how 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 do we execute a query? Uh, imagine again this question about uh, who are the presidents of European countries that never held the World Cup. Here is the computation graph for the query. Uh, the way this will do is we basically learn the embeddings of entities. Each entity is, em is embedded as a beta distribution here, shown in two-dimensional space. So 
This is the beta distribution for the entity Europe. This is for World Cup. Then we want to traverse um, and apply to projection operator. So for from Europe, we want to go to all the European countries. So we take this beta distribution, transform it according to the learned projection operator to find another beta distribution. Hopefully, this beta distribution has high density where the embeddings of uh, European countries are located. We take the World Cup and also um, transform that according to the held relation to hopefully cover all the uh, countries that have held a World Cup. Now we apply the um, negation operator to say countries that never held the World Cup. And now uh, uh, this uh, changes the density. Wherever the, the original beta had a high density, it now has the low density. And wherever the density was low uh, is now high. Um, and now we need to take the um, intersection operator between the countries in Europe and countries that never held the World Cup. And uh, this would now um, uh, cover the countries that are in Europe but never held the World Cup. And now from here, we need to traverse according the president relation so that these countries, uh, we actually get to the, uh, to the embedding, to a beta distribution that hopefully covers the countries the presidents of the European countries that never held the World Cup. So now what we can do is we have I, I arrived to the final distribution uh, for the embedding of the query. And now we can measure the KL distance between uh, the presidents of different countries. And um, in our case, for example, the distance between the uh, president of Portugal and the embedding of the query will be small because Portugal never held the World Cup, while uh, the distance between uh, query and the um, French president will be high because France has held the uh, World Cups uh, before. So this is an example uh, of, uh, our, uh, of our approach. So um, now I showed you how to handle negation and uh, how to handle um, uh, conjunction. How about a disjunction? Um, we have two ways to handle disjunction. One is to um, use a disjunctive normal form to basically rewrite the query in such a way that, that, um, that uh, any query can be rewritten such that we have a, a set of conjunctions and then a final disjunction between them. Um, and this is nice because then we can partially answer each of the conjunctions and then um, just take the OR as the last step. Um, this is nice because exact uh, form of uh, handling this junction, um, it is very expressive since modeling this junction is a multimodal embedding. Um, this can be computationally expens expensive because the rewriting a query into this disjunction normal form can the query can blow up exponentially in the uh, worst case. Uh, another approach how to handle this junction would be to use the De Morgan laws, where we can say A or B, we can rewrite that as a not, uh, and then not A and not B, right? So here we represent union operation as a single embedding, which is less expressive, but has good approximation to the real world queries. Um, but this is uh, more efficient and scalable uh, because it's linear in the, in the query size, since uh, you know union is now modeled simply by three negations and one disjunction, right? So this, uh, sorry, one conjunction. This is a product of two beta distributions, and this is just inverse of the beta parameter. So this is super scalable. So the last thing I want to mention is how do we model uh, uncertainty, right? Is the learned embedding a good representation of the query? And here we draw a connection between the entropy of the beta embedding and the number of answers a query has. And our question is, right, like the idea is that the more answers the query will have, the higher the entropy of the beta distribution. So we can use this entropy as a notion of the certainty that the, that the system has in answering uh, a given query. So uh, to conclude the talking about the method, uh, the benefits of our method is that it is scalable and efficient. It allows us to answer any first order logical query um, by basically reducing it to a couple of uh, uh, oper uh, super scalable operations and a single k nearest neighbor uh, search query. It is general in the sense that any query can be answered. Uh, uh, these operators can be uh, combined in arbitrary way, even different ways than what we use for training. So any query is possible. And as our experiments demonstrate, this is very robust to noise uh, and graphs can contain a lot of missing links and uh, noisy relationships, but the method will still provide uh, good results. 
the way we train our approach is the following, right? We want to identify two things. We want to identify the logical operators and we want to identify um, uh, the embeddings of all the entities. So the way we do this is that we take the original knowledge graph, we um, uh, sample a, a logical queries. This would be, for example, a, connect, uh, a set of uh, three projections. This is an intersection of uh, uh, from uh, uh, two projections with an intersection, three, pro uh, three projections with an intersection, and so on. And then for every query, we randomly sample the anchored entity we uh, randomly um, execute the query and identify what are the positive answers entities that are answers to this query. These are our positive examples. And then uh, entities that are not answered to the query, uh, those are the negative answers. And our goal is to learn entity embeddings and the logical operators such that we maximize the distance between the query and the negatives. And we minimize the distance between the query and the positives, right? When I say the distance, I mean, we take the query, we execute it in the embedding space, that is a data distribution. And then we wanna uh, maximize the KL uh, divergence between the beta distribution of the query and beta distribution of uh, the entities uh, that are the negative examples for that particular query. And similarly, right, kind of analogously, we wanna minimize the distance between the embedding of the query and the uh, positive entities. Um, and this is all we basically do, right? We, we learn these embeddings, we learn the, the operators, um, we have this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, kind of pairwise loss that says embedding of the query and the embedding of the positive entity have to be closer to each other than the embedding of the query and the embedding of the uh, negative uh, entity, so a non-answer uh, entity. So now with all this, the, uh, we want to quickly go over experimental results. So the question is, you know, does our method generalize to new unseen queries? Does our method generalize to new unseen query structures, so new logical structures? And can we model uh, uncertainty? We uh, train and also um, evaluate our uh, approach on an incomplete knowledge graph. So it means that um, we only evaluate on queries that are not answerable in the training knowledge graph. So basically test queries are not answerable in the training graph. So every test query requires at least one missing relation. So at least one relation needs to be implicitly imputed. Um, uh, otherwise the query cannot be answered. This means that in our case, this kind of graph traversal query template matching would have accuracy of zero. Basically it would have accuracy of random guessing because uh, there's always at least one edge missing when we want to traverse uh, the knowledge graph to obtain the answers. We apply our approach to um, uh, two different knowledge graphs, the NEL knowledge graph from Carnegie Mellon, Mellon the never uh, ending uh, language learning uh, knowledge graph and the free base uh, knowledge graph. And then we uh, have a set of query structures that we use for training. Um, and we also then have a set of different logical query structures that we use for uh, evaluation. So for training and evaluation queries, here we train on some set of entities and some set of query structures, and then we evaluate on the same set of query structures, same logical queries, but different uh, entity types. Um, and let's see how well the approach works. What we find out is that on the uh, training queries, this is still proper cross-validation, um, our approach outperforms query to box by almost 20% uh, at uh, hits at one metric. So basically ranking the correct entity uh, on the top spot. What fraction of times do we do? Uh, on conjunctive query structures, we also get sizable improvement of 13.5%. So it means that um, beta E provides a flexible way to model uh, this junction and operates better on uh, just queries that contain and and or. However, beta E also has another uh, benefit that it can handle negation. And what we find out is that beta E provides actually quite good performance on queries uh, that also uh, include a negation. And uh, here we don't compare to other methods because none of other methods can handle uh, queries with negation. And last, we also want to talk quickly about uncertainty. 
Um, and what we show here is that actually the, the, uh, that beta E can quite nicely model the uncertainty of the query answers. We see that correlation between the entropy of the beta distribution and the number of uh, answer entities um, is uh, much higher in beta E than, for example, it would be in a query to box. So um, to conclude in this talk, I discussed about this idea how you can take a knowledge graph, embed it into the space, and then embed the structure this space in such a way that we can actually uh, logically reason inside the embedding space. Um, I, I presented an approach that uses beta embeddings to, uh, to handle logical reasoning uh, of uh, first order logic. So we support union, intersection, and negation. Um, and I show that our approach provides state of the art results to seen, uh, unseen, as well as uh, extrapolated uh, queries. Um, beta E allows us to embed uh, queries as beta distributions in the embedding space. And then logical operators be become operators, spatial operators that transform these beta, beta distributions. And because the operations are closed, it means um, we can chain them and combine them in arbitrary ways. And we are basically able to answer any kind of logical query because the operators can be combined in uh, arbitrary ways. Um, what are some ideas for the future work? Um, first question is how do we scale to large scale knowledge graphs right beyond this um, couple of tens of thousands of entities? Uh, for example, um, how do we scale to knowledge graphs with millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of entities? Um, how would we include additional um, reasoning operators? For example, how do we handle comparative queries? Uh, so queries that go beyond the first order logic. And also how do we think about inductive reasoning where we could think of node features and be able to generalize beyond just the entities that we see uh, in the, in the uh, knowledge graph. So the question would be, can we learn to reason with missing entities as well? Not only missing relations, uh, but missing entities as well. So um, with this, uh, this concludes my talk um, and uh, thank you very much.